let's start our afternoon session. And I'm happy to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Anton Eisenberg from National Research University High School of Economics. Anton is going to talk about toric topology of complexity one. Please, Anton. Thank you, Vanya. Uh, yeah, and thank you for the invitation to this meeting. Also, this is, <laughs> this is a remote meeting. Anyway, I'm happy to give a talk here. Uh, so I will talk about toric topology of complexity one. And so I will speak about torus, uh, compact torus sections of complexity one. Uh, well, this, uh, some parts of this, works, uh, of this work uh, were made uh, together with uh, Mikia Masuda and some parts are made together with Vladislav Cherepanov from Moscow. Um, so at first I want to define what, uh, what a complexity is and uh, recall some basic things about torus sections. Uh, probably these things are well known to anyone, but anyway, I will remind uh, all necessary definitions. Uh, and I will remind something about complexity zero case, which is in some sense, in some sense classical in uh, toric geometry and toric topology. And then I will speak about complexity one. And at the end, a little bit will be uh, said about general complexity. Uh, so, okay, uh, what, uh, what is interesting to me? Uh, both we have some smooth, closed, connected, orientable manifold, and this manifold is acted on by a compact torus. So a compact torus is just the product of several circles. And n will denote, will always denote a half the dimension of, uh, of a manifold, and k will be the dimension of, of a torus. So all, all, all dimensions are real, in, in, in real sense. Uh, so I have this action. Of course, I can assume, well, I shall assume that uh, this action is effective. And also, I will assume that um, the fixed point set uh, is, so the fixed points are isolated and that they exist. All right, so this, this is the number of fixed points uh, is between zero and infinity. So in some sense, uh, in toric topology, we like quasi-toric manifolds and we like moment angle manifolds. Uh, so my talk will be more about something like quasi-toric manifolds, not, not about moment angle manifolds. And if I have this assumption on uh, fixed points, then uh, I have this inequality that uh, the dimension of uh, effective torus section is at most half the dimension of a manifold. So this difference between N and K is called the complexity of the action. Uh, okay, so now, now let me recall some well-known things uh, in topology. So what we, what we usually consider when we want to study torus sections. Uh, first, we want to have uh, the universal principle T bundle so T is our torus, TK. Uh, and uh, the classifying space of a torus is, of course, the product of K copies of CP infinity. And its cohomology ring is uh, the polynomial algebra. Uh, R is some ground ring, which will be either a field or integers. And uh, if I have this uh, universal principle bundle, I can consider the Borel construction of X, uh, which is the quotient of the product uh, of this uh, contractible space ET with X acted on diagonally by T. And this is the, the orbit space of this free action on the, on the product. And I can consider the equivalent cohomology. Well, I can define equivalent cohomology of, of a manifold X as uh, ordinary cohomology of, of the Borel construction of X. And uh, I have a vibration, this natural vibration. When I take this space, I can project anything to ET over T, which is just the classifying space. So I have this vibration uh, and it induces uh, a spectral sequence of this form. So it starts with uh, the product of cohomology, ordinary cohomology of X and 
uh, the polynomial algebra uh, and converges to equivariant cohomology of X. Um, and uh, there is a notion of equivariant formality or like cohomological equivariant formality in the sense of Karieski quote with McPherson. Uh, so we say that uh, a manifold, well, maybe maybe a general space X, uh, which is acted on by, by a torus. Uh, well, in our case, we, we deal only with manifolds. Uh, so a T-manifold X is called equivariantly formal if uh, this shear spectral sequence uh, collapses at E2 uh, term. Um, well, and it, in particular, so this is a very important property since it tells us that we can extract ordinary cohomology of X from equivariant cohomology of X by coefficient change. So this uh, equivariant cohomology ring is the module over polynomials. So we can uh, change the coefficients by uh, tensoring with the ground, the ground ring R over the polynomial ring. Well, in other words, this ordinary cohomology is the quotient of equivariant cohomology by some, well, by some uh, parametric parametric ideal or, well, by, by some linear system of parameters, something like that. Um, so one simple remark is that uh, if uh, X does not have odd degree cohomology, so if odd degree cohomology of X vanishes, then of course X is equivariantly formal. Well, this, this is a simple observation because uh, in, in this case, uh, the second page of the Serre spectral sequence, uh, which is the product of uh, cohomology of BT and cohomology of X, uh, has non-trivial, may have non-trivial elements only when both P and Q are even. So for dimensional reasons, all higher differentials in this spectral sequence vanish. Um, and well, another remark, which one can derive from localization theorem, for example, uh, well, and some other observations is that if we have this condition that um, fixed points exist and they are isolated, uh, then the converse statement also holds holds true. So if X is equivariantly formal, then uh, odd degree cohomology of X vanish. Well, uh, ju just to mention that uh, this notion of equivariant formality uh, depends on the coefficient ring, of course, because it is some this is some uh, cohomological definition, and uh, so, since it is a, a homological definition, it depends on the ground ring. Uh, so this statement holds over, over a fixed ring. Uh, and also, I need to mention one one more technical assumption. So I, I don't want to mention to mention it each time in the following. So I will assume that uh, this condition holds. Um, for my action, if I take uh, any subgroup in a torus, uh, then uh, any connected component of, of the fixed point set of this subgroup uh, contains a fixed point. Uh, in some sense, this means that um, if you go along uh, some orbits uh, of this torus section, of, of, of the torus section, of the T action on X, then you can come close to a fixed point. So if you, you have some stratification by orbit types, uh, so I will uh, give more details later, but uh, there, there is some uh, stratification of, uh, of X by uh, orbit types. And this condition, this technical assumption means that um, in each stratum you can reach some fixed point in some sense. Um, and just to mention that uh, if an action is equivariantly formal, then uh, it satisfies this technical assumption. Well, if the action is equivariantly formal and has fixed points, 
isolated fixed points. So I will not mention this assumption uh, in, in all statement. Uh, so I, I assume that all actions are appropriate. Uh, and our interest is the following. So the methods of toric topology are well developed uh, for, uh, for actions of complexity zero that, that are actions of uh, Tn on x to n, like actions of half dimensional torus. And uh, th that was a problem posed by uh, Victor Bustaber and Svetlana Terzic in their works uh, that we want to extend some methods of toric topology to manifolds with actions of general complexity. Well, in particular, we are interested in uh, the description, in describing the relation between uh, the topology of a manifold itself and the topology and combinatorial, combinatorial structure of, of its orbit space. Uh, so, so we want to study uh, actions of general complexity in terms uh, in terms of um, uh, well by, by topological methods like we, we want to use some machinery of to uh, of toric topology in general complexity uh, and let me recall some facts about complexity zero actions. So actions of complexity zero are, as I told you, the actions of n-dimensional torus on two n-dimensional manifold. And one uh, definition, which probably most of you know very well, that the, the action of this form is called uh, locally standard if uh, this action locally looks like uh, the standard representation of, uh, of a torus uh, on Cn. So Cn is just R2n and the action of a torus on Cn is given coordinate wise. So we have this n tuple of complex numbers uh, with absolute values one and this is acted, this, is, this acts on uh, the n tuple of uh, complex numbers by uh, multiplying coordinate wise. And so, so we, we call uh, the action locally standard if it looks like this up to automorphism of torus. Uh, so it may be not precisely this action, but some, some other representation uh, of a torus. Uh, and we can notice that uh, since this Cn quotient by Tn is just an, the non-negative cone, so if you allow to multiply each complex number by, if, if you allow to rotate an angle for each number, then you can make all these numbers uh, real non-negative. So we get non-negative cone here. And this shows you that the orbit space of locally standard action is a manifold with corners. Uh, all right, so here is uh, a theorem which describes, uh, which gives a criterion of equivariant formality of an action uh, when the action has complexity zero. Uh, so this is a theorem of uh, Mikia Masuda and Taraspanov. Um, it tells the following, that if all faces of the, uh, of the orbit space are acyclic, including P itself, so P, P is a manifold with corners, it has some natural stratification, it has some faces. And if all faces are acyclic, then X is equivalently formal. And conversely, if X is equivalently formal uh, with complexity zero action, uh, then uh, this action should be locally standard and all faces of its orbit space are acyclic. So we can check equivariant formality by looking at, uh, at the orbits, uh, ju just at the orbit space. Um, and when, when this holds, when everything holds like this, uh, we can describe topology of X in terms of combinatorics of the orbit space. Uh, like uh, the, so odd, odd Betty numbers vanish, but even Betty numbers of X can be computed by H numbers of this P of this uh, orbit space and cohomology, equivalent cohomology ring is what is called the phase ring and ordinary cohomology is the quotient of 
the phase ring by the linear some linear system of parameters. And these H numbers can be computed from purely from combinatorics of P. And as I told you that Z, Z P is the phase ring. Uh, the analog of Stanley Reisner rings, but for simply shell ball sets rather than simply shell complexes. And of course, uh, as, as the motivating example, you can look at what is now called quasitoric manifolds introduced in the paper of Davis and Yanushkevich. Uh, so in this case, the orbit space is just a simple polytope, of course. Uh, all faces of a simple polytope are cyclic, and we all, we all know that uh, quasitoric manifolds are equivalently formal. Uh, all right, so let's move on to complexity one. Uh, just some examples. Uh, so, so this first example was mentioned in in the talk of Svetlana Terzic. Uh, I will mention. Uh, the result uh, a bit later. So we have an action of three-dimensional torus on uh, the complex Grassmann manifold. This is the Grassmann manifold of two planes in C4. Uh, and this is the homogeneous space of this form. So this action has, uh, this Grassmannian has dimension eight. So this action has complexity one. Uh, Another example is the action of uh, two-dimensional torus on, uh, on the manifold of complete complex flags in C3. Uh, so this manifold has real dimension six. So again, this is the complexity one example. Uh, and also we have the action of um, three-dimensional torus on HP2, on quaternionic projective plane. Uh, well, one can uh, understand this action as, okay, this HP2 is the homogeneous space of this form. And here in this group, we have maximal torus T3. So it acts from, from the left side here. Uh, and of course, you can write this action in just in homogeneous quaternionic coordinates here. Uh, so this is another interesting example, uh, and I thank Shintaro Kuroki for telling me about this example and that it is really something non-trivial. Uh, and also we have the action, well, it seems simple, however, the example is interesting. So we have uh, almost a uh, complex six-dimensional sphere, well, which is given by, as, as a homogeneous space of exceptional Lie group G2. And here in G2, again, we have uh, a maximal torus T2, and it acts from the left side. So, so we have this action on six-dimensional sphere. So all of these manifolds, all the listed manifolds here are, of course, equivalently formal because it is very easy to compute their cohomology and find out that there are no odd degree cohomology in all cases. Uh, and there are other examples. These are family, like big family, big families of examples. Uh, first of all, you can restrict actions. Of course, if you have an action of complexity zero, which is the action of Tn on x to n, uh, you can take some subtorus Tn, mi Tn minus one inside Tn and uh, take the induced action on x to n. Uh, and if you start with, with some quasitoric manifold, uh, then you will get something equivalently formal because, uh, well, in this case, uh, there are no odd degree cohomology. But uh, we need to check. So here we need to be careful. Uh, we need to require that uh, when we take the restricted action, the induced action of the subtorus, then its fixed point set is still, uh, Finite, so the fixed point uh, of of this torus are still isolated, and this gives an example of equivalently formal action of complexity one. And of course, there is a huge realm of Hamiltonian actions on symplectic manifolds. Um, so you can consider like Hamiltonian actions, as I told you, and. All Hamiltonian actions are equivalently formal. This is, this is well known. And 
precisely uh, Hamiltonian actions of complexity one were extensively studied by Yael Karshon and Susan Tolman. So uh, they studied the topology and again I will uh, tell some results uh, of Yael Karshon and Susan Tolman later. Uh, so these are just some, some examples which we are interested in. And now uh, let me require something from uh, from 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 my action. Uh, so uh, I introduced the notion of general position uh, of complexity one action. So uh, let us take some fixed point of the action and consider its uh, tangent weights. So I look at the tangent tangent space uh, at the point x. And this, is, this gives a representation of torus. And since it is, uh, it is a representation, it uh, can be decomposed into like two-dimensional real, in, into the sum of two-dimensional real representations. So this, each, each two-dimensional representation is given by some sort of rotation. So uh, each, uh, each summand is given by some weight. So, so weight is a homomorphism from uh, t from our torus t n minus one to to the circle, and this this representation is just given by uh, take uh, take this um, this homomorphism and multiply with complex number. And since we work with, uh, so we don't have any complex structure, uh, I don't want to, to deal with complex structures uh, in my talk. Uh, so these weights are defined up to sign. So I, I do not really care about uh, sign changes in weights. So these sign, signs of course are important in general, but in my talk they, they are irrelevant. Uh, and I call the action uh, of complexity one an action in general position if uh, for any fixed point, any n minus one of these weights are linearly independent. Uh, so you see we have n weights in n minus one dimensional lattice. Uh, I forget about the lattice. I consider them as um, like rational vectors, for example. So this, this lattice uh, sits inside here. And so I have uh, n vectors. And if any n minus one of them are linearly independent, so if they are, if they form a basis of this space, uh, then I call the action in general position. This is some very natural assumption. Well, in particular, this assumption holds for the listed examples. So this, these examples. Uh, for Grassmann manifold, flag manifold, quaternionic plane, and S6. Okay, so what can we tell about um, actions, uh, actions in general position? Well, about their orbit spaces. Well, first of all, we can look look what what happens locally. So, I look uh, at at the general action. Uh, of complexity one in general position. And uh, then uh, it is not difficult to show that the orbit space of such action uh, is a closed topological manifold. So, so the action is not free. So uh, I don't know what to do. So how to introduce some smooth structures on the orbit space or whether they exist or not, but at least this is uh, a topological manifold. And on the contrary, uh, if the action is not in general position, uh, then the orbit space uh, is again a manifold, uh, a topological manifold, but with it, it, it should have it should have boundary. So it necessarily has boundary. Uh, so whenever you see one uh, fixed point in here, uh, where the weights are in, not in general position, then this orbit space uh, has boundary components. So this, this was proved by Vlad Chirpa. 
uh, all right, so these are some local properties, uh, and this is not very difficult, but we are interested in uh, global structure of the orbit space. Uh, what can be said about the global structure? Um, so, yeah. So, first example, so first result of this kind was uh, proved by uh, Viktor Bostaber and Svetlana Terzic uh, in terms of their theory of two and k manifolds. And the result uh, tells that. The quotient of uh, the, this Grassmann manifold, G42, uh, the orbit space of this manifold is five dimensional sphere, and uh, the orbit space of uh, complete slag manifold F3 is again a sphere, S4. And this was generalized. Uh, well, both, uh, both Grassmann manifold and slag manifold are examples of. Uh, Hamiltonian actions on simple, so these manifolds are symplectic and the actions are Hamiltonian. And uh, there was uh, a general theorem uh, pro proven by Yael Karshon and Susan Tolman that if you have uh, a Hamiltonian action in general position, uh, well, an action of complexity one, then its orbit space is homeomorphic to, uh, to a sphere of uh, well, of appropriate dimension, like in, in, in case of Grassmann manifold, we should we shall have five here, and in flag manifold we have four here. Uh, so this gives uh, many more examples of uh, such actions where we still have uh, spheres in uh, in the orbit space. Uh, but still, uh, there are some non-Hamiltonian examples. Uh, like, well, first of all, you can restrict uh, the action on quasitoric manifold to some co dimension one subtorus. And in this case, if this restricted action uh, of Tn minus one uh, on X is in general position, well, this means in particular that the fixed points are isolated. So I require that fixed points of this action on X are isolated, and this condition condition on tangent weights hold. So in this case, the quotient of uh, this quasitoric manifold by this smaller torus is homeomorphic to to a sphere. So of course, of course, if we take the the quotient of X to n by T n, we get some simple polytope. But this is something different. So here we take action uh, the quotient by uh, smaller torus. Okay, this is also not, not very difficult. And another thing is that uh, in these two cases, uh, for quaternionic projective plane and uh, almost complex sphere, uh, again, we have spheres in, in the orbit space. So this holds. Uh, and this is, uh, well, especially this result uh, is uh, related to other interesting uh, results that I want to mention. Uh, so uh, there is some classical theorem now well known uh, of Kuiper-Massy, which tells that the quotient of CP2 by uh, complex conjugation is homeomorphic to four-dimensional sphere. Well, it is not, not only homeomorphic, it, it is also piecewise linear homeomorphic. Uh, but anyway, now uh, I deal only with uh, homeomorphisms. So, so this sign everywhere here is for just for topological homeomorphism. Um, and this, this result was uh, generalized in several ways by Arnold, by Vladimir Arnold. Uh, in particular, he generalized uh, it this way. So he noticed that the quotient of HP2 uh, by, by circle is homeomorphic to S7. Uh, so, so this T1 is, uh, is actually the diagonal subtorus in, in here. Uh, okay, so, so there, is, there is a certain similarity. You can notice a certain similarity here. Uh, 
Uh, all right, so we have many examples when the orbit space is a sphere, and so we tried to generalize all things, uh, to put them all together, and uh, we proved the following result. So this is our joint work with Mikia Masuda. Uh, so at first, suppose, suppose for simplicity that R is a field. Then uh, if we take a covariantly formal action in general position, then the orbit space should be a homology sphere. And so as I told you, uh, the quotient, the, this orbit space uh, is a topological manifold and uh, we, we assert that this topological manifold has uh, homology the same as uh, homology of sphere if you take coefficients in R. And this holds true over integers if you additionally require that all stabilizers are connected. Uh, and one more addition, if, uh, if in addition uh, X is simply connected, then the quotient should be homeomorphic to a sphere. Well, the, the last sentence follows from generalized Poincaré conjecture in topological category, because if X is simply connected, then it is uh, very easy to show that uh, its orbit space is also simply connected. Uh, so we have like simply connected topological, closed topological manifold, which is a homology sphere, and this should be homeomorphic to a sphere. All right, uh, and this this theorem covers uh, all mentioned results actually. Uh, this Grassmann manifold, flag manifold, quaternionic plane, as six restricted actions and Hamiltonian actions. Um, all right, but um, so we have this very nice uh, structure of of the orbit space uh, when uh, the action is in is in general position. So what happens when the action is not in general position? Uh, actually, in this case, the orbit space of, well, even if you restrict to equivariantly formal actions, then their orbit spaces uh, can be, well, almost anything. This, uh, this is our, this is a result from our joint work with Vlad Cherepanov. Um, and the result is the following. Uh, so, you give me any simplicial complex, well, finite simplicial complex, and then uh, I can provide you uh, some equivalently formal uh, torus action of complexity one, uh, such that the orbit space uh, is homotopy equivalent to triple suspension of, over, over L. So, I can cover, I can obtain uh, any triple suspension as well as the homotopy type of the orbit space uh, of equivalently formal actions, and actually this uh, this manifold X L uh, so we construct it uh, explicitly. It is uh, some well certain CP one bundle over the permutahedral variety. So in particular, this X X L is itself well as a variety as a manifold, as a variety, it is a projective toric variety, and in particular, it is, this, this action is Hamiltonian. So, so uh, our example here lies in the class of Hamiltonian actions. So, uh, if you forget about, if you forget about this general position assumption, then uh, things become worse in some sense. So, uh, we, we, we can get anything in the orbit space. Uh, all right, so let's continue uh, and describe some combinatorial structure of complexity one actions uh, in more detail. Uh, so, toric topology we get used to like simple polytopes. Of course, simple polytopes are not very interesting from topological point of view, but they have some combinatorics. And we want to uh, find some analog of this combinatorial theory for complexity one actions. Uh, to do this, we need some very natural thing. We consider the orbit type filtration on X. So this, uh, my manifold X can be decomposed, uh, well, can be filtered by dimensions of orbits. 
So I consider these spaces x not x1, x da, 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 xn minus 2. Uh, so xi is the union of at most i dimensional orbits. And I take the quotient of everything by a torus and uh, I get some filtration on the orbit space. So since uh, we, we live in general position, this Q is uh, n plus one dimensional topological manifold. Uh, but moreover, and again, this is not very difficult to prove, that uh, all previous terms of this filtration have dimensions equal to their index. So this has dimension n minus 2. So there is some certain gap between this space and this space. So this space is, is a co-dimension 3 subspace in here. This has dimension n plus 1, and this is n minus 2. And I want to look carefully at this qn minus 2. So I will denote it by that. And I will call it the sponge of the action. So uh, I will show you uh, some evidence why, why I want to call it the sponge. Uh, so this sponge is, uh, well, certainly some topological space, but it also has some stratification. Uh, so this space has faces. Uh, okay, let me show you some pictures. Um, but, uh, the observation is that uh, this sponge is something which is locally homeomorphic to uh, n minus two skeleton of n-dimensional polytope. Well, for example, if n equals three, then you get something which locally looks like one skeleton of three polytope. This is just a three valent graph. So sponge, uh, when n equals three, the sponge looks like this, this locally looks like this. So it is a graph with degree of each um, vertex equal to three. And when n equals four, the sponge is something two dimensional and it looks like this uh, gray object here. Uh, so if you imagine four-dimensional polytope and take its two skeletons, then you will see the same picture. Uh, sorry, uh, four-dimensional simple polytope. Then locally it looks like this. All right, so these are examples of sponges for some manifolds. When, uh, when we look at, at the flux manifold, in this case, it has dimension six, so n equals three. And in this case, uh, the sponge is just some three valent graph. And it is not difficult to see that in case of graph, this is just a GKM graph of, of an action. So, so this, this, this is just uh, the GKM or graph of, of the flag manifold and looks like this. And for Grassmann manifolds, we get some two dimensional um, complex, like cell complex obtained as follows. You take the boundary of octahedron and attach additionally three square cells. Like you attach cells along equators of, um, of octahedron. So you have this red square and ye uh, yellow square and green square. And this is something two dimensional. So this is the sponge of G42. And of course, this lives inside the orbit space. Uh, and the orbit space is five dimensional spheres. So you should imagine all pictures as living inside some spheres. And yet, to make more precise statement about equivalently formal actions, uh, we have to consider this sponge and faces as well. Uh, so the complete version of our theorem with Mukia. Uh, is the following. So if we have a covariantly formal action in general position, uh, then, uh, well, as I told you, its orbit space uh, is a homology sphere. And also uh, all faces, all faces of this orbit space, of the sponge of the orbit space are acyclic. Uh, this is similar to the theorem of Masuda and Panov. And moreover, the sponge itself, so this, this object, uh, is acyclic up to top dimension. So it doesn't have homology except for 
well, it doesn't have Betty numbers except for the top Betty number. Top Betty numbers in both cases are non-zero. Well, this makes the sponge something like a coin macaulay complex. Uh, so it is also a very familiar thing. And so we have this uh, homological properties of the orbit spaces of equivalently formal action actions. And conversely, if these three conditions hold well over integers, then the action is equivalently formal. So this gives a criterion for equivalent formality. In, for equivalent formality for complexity one actions in general position. Um, okay, now uh, it is interesting to study sponges. So, okay, suppose that we have some abstract sponge which is not uh, given by some orbit space of something, but just the space which is which locally looks like n minus two skeleton of a simple n polytope. And we say that the sponge, this abstract sponge is acyclic if uh, it satisfies these two conditions. So all faces are acyclic and the sponge itself uh, is like coin Macaulay. Uh, and we can study combinatorics of such objects. So we can count the number of i-dimensional faces of the sponge and we also can count the top Betty number of the sponge. So this is uh, the unique uh, non-trivial Betty numbers, Betty number of Z. Uh, so we get some characteristic of the sponge. Uh, and of course, this number B can be expressed uh, from uh, F numbers through Euler characteristic. So we only need to specify this fi's actually. And uh, we can count Betty numbers. So if now, now if we start with uh, equivalently formal uh, manifold with complexity one action in general position, we can compute its uh, even degree Betty numbers um, from these characteristics. Well, by this formula. This is something, well, some analog of H numbers in some sense. So if, if you have F numbers of, of a simple polytope, you can compute um, Betty numbers of quasitoric manifolds. And here it is very similar. Uh, so here are some examples. So in this case, you can compute how many vertices, edges, and uh, two-dimensional cells there are. So there are six vertices, 12, uh, 12 edges and 11 two-dimensional cells. We can count this top Betty number from Euler characteristic and we can count Betty numbers of Grassmannian. Yeah, of course we, we all know this Betty numbers, but we just checked this, that everything works. So, okay, we have, we have this example and we have this example with flag manifold. Okay, there is some arithmetic here. But this leads to some questions which, which, which are similar to questions in the theory of standard Eisner algebras. So now we can forget about the actions and consider uh, just uh, abstract sponges, acyclic sponges, and we can define its H numbers by, by this formula. Well, this, this, this is the same formula as before. So we make some virtual analog of Betty numbers of a manifold in some sense. So we can count this combinatorial characteristic and we may ask questions uh, about these H numbers. Like we can try to prove then Sommerville relations. So for, for manifolds, this of course is just the instance of Poincaré duality, uh, but we want to prove it for um, for abstract sponges. And uh, we may try to prove that these H numbers are always non-negative, which is the analog of lower bound conjecture for, for ordinary Betty numbers, or for ordinary H numbers. So, well, I don't know how to prove this, but I guess that uh, one can try to invent the theory of face rings of sponges, 
or something similar to face rings of simply shell spheres, for example. Um, and I have maybe one or two minutes, so let me just briefly tell what we have in arbitrary complexity. So some results can be extended to arbitrary complexity. Uh, so now I have the action of some, some action of TK on X to N. Uh, K and N are anything. And I still require that it has isolated fixed points. So I can count, so I can look at, at a fixed point and uh, look at the tangent weights. So now these are N vectors in ZK. Uh, and we call the action in J general position if any J of these vectors are linearly independent. So this is very natural and very simple. Uh, and well, for example, in GKM manifolds, it is required that the action is two, in two general position usually. All right. Uh, and we proved uh, the following theorem. So if we have some equivalently formal action, which is in J general position, then its orbit space is a cyclic up to dimension J plus one. So it's reduced homology groups uh, vanish for these indices. So the bigger generality of the, of the action, uh, the bigger a cyclicity of the orbit space. Um, okay, so this, this uh, theorem allows, well, from this theorem, you can recover our theorem, theorem about homology spheres and uh, one direction of the theorem of Masuda and Panov about a cyclicity, uh, a cyclicity in case of convexity zero. Um, and this, uh, this degree of a cyclicity cannot be improved. Again, we have some results about uh, some result about uh, suspensions. Uh, so, for any finite simply shell complex L, uh, I can invent some. Uh, torus section of complexity one in general J general position such that uh, this quotient, this orbit space is homotopy equivalent to J plus two fold suspension of over L. Uh, okay, so to finish, uh, there are some directions which we want to, to do next. Uh, so we still don't know what is the criterion for equivariant formality. Uh, if we if we don't have uh, the assumption of general position, uh, so it is interesting to see what happens with topology here. Things are uh, more complicated in this case. And also, as I told you, it is interesting to study analogs of uh, invent and study analogs of face rings uh, for sponges. So these sponges seem to be uh, interesting combinatorial objects. And of course, it is natural to find some theory for real versions uh, of complexity one actions and to show that in case of real versions, under some assumptions, the orbit spaces are homeomorphic to spheres and things of this sort. And there is another thing which I will not mention in details, but uh, the sponges, so uh, the sponge is something that locally looks like uh, like a tropical hyperplane. So if, if you look at the picture of a sponge, uh, at the local picture of a sponge, this, this is very similar to tropical hyperplane. And for in tropical geometry, there is some very nice theory, like tropical cohomology theory, and it seems to be related to uh, to the study of torus sections, but yet it is, it should be done later. Uh, okay, that's all, thank you.